Matt, we got you 272, buddy. That's what we end up with. I'm not even going to mess around. I'm going to jump right into this. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the fourth heat cycle. We'll start it again. They do that when they're cold. Let's start it again. Some of these saws, the 272s and the 372s, you'll hear a little whine in them. And uh, I, I had people say, well, what, that sounds like a turbo whine. No, it's not. It's, uh, it's the air. You're, what you're hearing is the air through the transfers. It's what you're hearing when they get that whine. Uh, I don't build all saws the same. I try to tailor them to a person if I got any kind of info on them. Uh, it makes it more fun for me. They all run pretty good. Nice saw. Here's what the deal is. We are going to bar our saws up this weekend, barring bad weather. If it doesn't rain anymore, we can get in and we can get some uh, sawing done. Irregardless, I'll get these saws run. Uh, I really, I like these ones. I really do. Uh, I really, I thought I'd uh, show you Sean's. Uh, we got her dolled up. Muffler day tomorrow. Muffler day. That's what you're going to see. Okay. Here it is, Sean. We're going to build a muffler for Sean tomorrow. Nice saw in that. I'm going to set a couple of these down. I want to show you something. Robert Ramston, been too long, buddy. You need this. Nice little 61. Husky 61. It's a Practica. Original side cover on it. It's, that's what it is. It's a Practica. Uh, kind of a cool saw, isn't it? Yeah, it was built way before chain breaks, trust me. Uh... You guys seen that run? We we did run this one already. All we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in the box and he's getting his saw. But I wanted you to know that saws like this are special. They're part of history. Uh, I don't generally push them real far, and I really didn't think I did this one. But it's a runner. It, it's not afraid to do work. Good work saw here. This is how my thing's been in this family a long time, for farmer folk. And uh, it, it shows the miles. It's got a lot more left in it. I'm really happy about that. But, what we're going to do, hand me that saw right behind you there. This is the one I've been wanting to get back to. We're going to build mufflers. Now, we're taking this off. We're going to build something that's got a semi-expansion pipe in it. That's what we're going to do. This is Hogan uh, Smith's Buckins Boys saw. But most importantly, I haven't been happy with a carburetor on this. I tried one of my personal carburetors on it. Bam. It, it, it did everything I wanted. But... We've had it in our mind that we're going to change how these saws are put together in these series. The 266, 268, 272 on some saws. This is one of them we're going to change. Uh, Colin, over there in that box is a little bag with a uh, curb on it. Yes. Yep. And I'm going to show you the difference. And I'm going to try to answer some questions that was asked. 
How do I tell which one's a high jet and a low jet? That's pretty easy. Most carburetors are marked. The, the, the jet that's closest to the cylinder is on the Huskies is your uh, low jet. The other one's a high jet. But you'll see I, in the casting there's an L and an H. That's for low and high. Now this is a 268, 272 carburetor. That's what this is. And uh, I'll tell you a little something about them. They feed impulse air through that little hole right there. Now this is one of them aftermarket ones. If you get them aftermarket ones, they're not as nice to work with. Just be, just be aware of that. You have to redrill that hole a lot of times. It's not big enough. But I don't like the idea of having to pull my vacuum right there on the end of that intake. I don't like it. It's not stable vacuum there. I want it from the body of the saw. Just like we do with them Pioneers. We uh, drill them and we put a brass tube in them so that we can go to this style carburetor where the, your vacuum comes right in on top. It makes more sense than having it come in right here. That's where your vacuum comes in on the 266, 268, 272s. Now this is a 390 carburetor. I'm going to tell you, it is a much bigger carburetor and this saw does need that. It, uh, it really does. Now, I don't know if I can actually get that where you can see the difference or not, but I doubt I can, so I'm probably not even going to bother trying. But anyway, the 390 carburetor is a much bigger carburetor inside, and it has capability of delivering more fuel. Most importantly, we're going to stabilize the idle characteristic and starting characteristics by using this style carb instead of this style. Now there's things about that that are goofy. And I'll tell you that right now. Your linkage on the 268 to the 272 it's metal linkage goes in that hole. Right? Okay. I'm going to show you what you do about that. And uh, I'll find me a little screwdriver or something right here. This is cable linkage on the 272 carbs, three, uh, or I mean 372 carbs, 390. You just pop that right off. That's all you do. They must have had a bright idea because that hole is right there. That's the hole we're going to use. Okay. Throttle goes the proper way. It goes forward. But it, uh, it's, it's not an instantly plug-and-play deal. But uh, it's close. There's a, a little slight difference on how your choke operates. The 390 choke lever is forward. The 272, 266 is different. See, it's it's in a little, slightly different position. Get that background where you can see what I mean. Just slightly. It's not going to make a big difference. The only thing that may happen, and I might have to, instead of using the OEM choke rod, I might have to use one from a 372. That's what might have to happen. But I'm interested in doing this. It needs doing. And remember, you've seen it first right here with Iron Horse. You can do these things, guys. You can do everything that I do. Uh, now, keep in mind, we are not a channel that wants to have the bragging rights building the hottest saws. We build logging saws. We want them to last, but have good power in the cut. We're not trying to outbuild anybody else. We don't care. We're, 
we're the only one that just cares about what we do. We just build log and sauce. That's what we do. Doesn't mean you can't have fun with them, can you guys? And, by the way, it doesn't mean they can't be pretty hot because they can. But it's no use to building more horsepower than what your bearings can stand. Uh, I'll tell you that. There's no reason to build massive RPMs in a log and saw either. Now, if I decided that I wanted to make a saw that would run 30, 40, 50 cuts, and that's it before I had to tear it down, that's, that'd be a hot saw. That That's what I, I would consider for me. Uh, no, not a competition saw. That's different. That'd be a pretty spicy saw. I will do that to one of my own. You guys have asked for it. You want to see it? I'll do it to one of my own. I won't do somebody else's. Um, now, I'll tell you another thing you can expect. We are not building saws much for other people. You already know that. Just a, a few people that we've already picked out who we're going to build for. And we've built quite a few saws for Buck and Billy. And I'll tell you what you're going to see. We've, you're going to see saws hot enough you wonder if they're going to hold together. What we're going to do is push the limits even further because he knows how to sharpen. He knows how to run the saw. He knows what to look for. You're going to see him get hotter saws in the normal, normal saws. But I've got a little project I've been working on. You've seen this P51. We are going to build a turbocharged P51. Okay? Yeah. It took a little bit to work that out. That's not plug and play. The only thing I foresee, because turbos run high RPM, it's going to have just a little short exhaust. That's going to really require some hearing protection to be near that saw. That's going to sound like a jet. Uh, I didn't want to say it until we were ready to do it, and we're close. When we get some of these done, we're going to build one, and we're going to send it to Buckin. Because he likes them Pioneers because they're fun. I like them because they're fun. We have a P41 of his to build. Uh, you'll see that. I ain't forgot to rest you up. We're not building everything instantly. We're working the saws out that's been here a while. And once in a while, we'll just show. Like this one. Uh, Hogan really needs a saw back. Come on, guys. He's going to get it. And I've got his little echo top handle here that we've been farting around with for about six months. And uh, you're going to see that one, too. It... Uh, that's going to be a fun little build. Uh, we did it once, but I wasn't happy. I, I won't set a saw until I'm happy. I made gains. Yeah, I did. It won't do what I want it to do. I know what that saw, that little teeny tiny little bugger that uh, I know what it'll do. And uh, you'll see it right here first. Uh, I'm going to give you a little trick. You notice these saws. Those of you that sent them say, gosh, that looks, why does that look so nice? Why is that, you know, they have been worked. Some of these are old. You know, they're not new. They've got ding scratches. That doesn't mean you can't take care of them. But look at this stuff. This is actually for the motorcycles. We use them on our dirt bikes. Uh, they have several different brands of this stuff, but this just happens to be what we get locally. Uh... We use it because, number one, it protects the plastic. It also, what it does, is it makes them easier to get the darn mud off. It drips right off. It does. You just hit it with a garden hose, boom, it's on the ground. Mud's don't, put on it, the... don't put it on your brakes. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get it on your brakes. I made that mistake. Or your seat. Though. Yeah, don't put it on your seat. <laughs> but chainsaws don't have seats, do they? Chainsaw seat. So. Handle the It helps. When you just want to blow your saw off when you're done with it, the sawdust fines and oil and stuff don't stick to it. Nothing like, like what you're used to. Nothing like it. Uh, so there is an advantage. And I'm kind of excited about building this muffler for Matt's saw. Or Sean's saw. Sean, I get him, I'm getting confused here. Okay, Sean. I know what you want, buddy. Yeah, I do. And uh, I don't build muffler for 
only once in a blue moon. I almost got to be talked into it. But uh, they do make a difference. They really do. But uh, I want, Sean, when we do have a buck of stock or a get-together of some sort, I'll just leave it right there. Yeah, heads up, guys. Get-together of some sort. I want him to have a, a fun saw to carry the buck of stock or somewhere else. Might even be here. We don't know. When all the crap in the world settles down, we're going to have Buck and Billy out. We're going to have a grand old time where both of us are jonesing for it. There you go. It's going to be fun. It's going to be good times. We got good times coming up. We really do. We got some really interesting saw builds coming up, uh, honestly. Uh, I've got a 288 for Yank Doodle and Old School Husky. Yeah. We're doing one of them. I've got a 2100 for me. Uh, I'll do all your style guys' saw before we do that. I got this G660 that's a farmer tech, old form of saw, that has gave me nothing but rations of fit since I got the darn thing. And uh, we're making a compilation of videos. That was going to be a special build, a special saw for a special person. When he gets his saw back, I want him to know he got as good a saw as he'll ever get. Because I know what the capabilities of that saw is. But you're throwing away about half the parts. I'm just telling you, that's the way it is with them saws. But what's left is good. And uh, I'm on my third piston and cylinder combination to make me happy. Because... It's a steel, let's, let's call it what it is, it's a steel 66 mag, or MS-660. It's just a copy, is all. Doesn't mean that we can't bring it right up in the real world. And I'm really excited about running that one for you. I really am. Um, I got to get through this week. You're going to see that saw next week, is what you're going to do. Got to get these mufflers built. like to get this saw back. I'm, the three you just seen... I gotta get them run, make sure everything's just so. Send them to you guys. I uh I love building saws. That greenhouse project was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Uh in the pantry project. But that was honeydews, that was things that had to be done. That's uh that's survival. And I like living indoors, so that's we do sometimes when mom and barks we gotta sit and listen just a minute and she don't do that. I don't give her reason to. But when she gets her mind made up, it's going to go a certain way because of this or that. That's the way it's going to go. And uh, yeah, you single man, I know why you're single. Those of you that are married or in long-term relationships, you're going to say the same thing. Yeah, you do it. You do what you got to do. Uh, I, I got things I want to show you. But I'm not going to right now. But there is one thing I'm going to show you. One of you asked how that I build my plate when I build one of them two mufflers. Yeah, I just take me a piece of steel here. Now get me a sharp, sharpie that works. Now, I'm not going to use this. This is a used gasket. No reason to build that plate bigger than a gasket. But what I do, I just hold the gasket down. And I trace. That's all I do. That gasket tells me what I need to know. And I trace the outside. Now I got some pretty special tools I use for this. This channel is about taking what you got, working with it. Anybody can afford to buy a freaking $40 uh, Dremel. Anybody can afford to do what I do here. Uh, it's not a machine shop. You trace that out. Okay, you take a drill bit. I use a quarter inch most of the time. And so... In the corners 
of where I want. I leave that attached to last minute. Right in each one of these corners, I come down an eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch. You, you scribe a line here and you scribe a line here. Go down an eighth of an inch. That's quarter inch. Okay. Take a prick punch. Build a prick punch if you don't have one. So you can locate that. Drill four holes. You might have to drill one or two more for the next thing. Of course, them, you know, you just, you just prick punch the center of the hole there and there. And you just bore them. But in the interest of using these special tools that everybody has, I just use a saber saw with a metal bit or a metal blade. And I cut that out. That's all I do. And I do the same thing around here. I just cut that out. And then I'll take my Dremel and I'll make it match that gasket. And I'll clean it up on the outside. And then you got your plate. It's that easy. And then from there, you just take a piece of tubing. And you start building. You can use rectangle, anything. But, uh, hey, uh, here's my drift. This is a drift that I built. So then I can take round tubing and turn it to square when you got the right size. What I do, I start flattening it and flattening the sides. And I just drive that down. Because that right there, you notice it's got the edges bevel. Well, this ain't not special, is it? Uh, for the 372s, it doesn't work on me. This is a 272 gasket, 268. That's the right size right there. It just happened to be. Build little things like that to make your job easier, guys. And, uh, let's see, we got a piece of pipe over there, that smaller of the round pipe. Yep. We're going to take a piece of this round pipe. This is just common exhaust pipe. The cheaper stuff is thin wall. We're going to cut a little piece of it. Build a little expansion chamber, you know, buckets P38. We're going to make it fit that. We're going to get our measurement, and we're going to turn that out. And we're going to make that come out right here. That's what we're going to do. It's going to be tight to get all that in there where I want to, but that design muffler seems to be working good on them Pioneers. I did try it on a steel. I like it. Now we're going to do it to Hogan saw. So between the 390 carburetor upgrade and what we're doing for a muffler, I expect this to be a showstopper. And if it's not, we're going to make it one. Just plain and simple. We'll go back in, check our numbers, see if we want to do something different. No big deal. But I want this to be a showstopper. People... Thank you for being here, showing up, spending time with us. Really love you to be here. The comments are awesome. Keep that's that's my day. You make my day in the comments. Thumbs up if you liked it. Give me one. If you didn't, do what you got to do, man. It. Uh, I just want you to know that you're all welcome. And I. I wish there was a way this year we could all see each other, those of us that want to. But it's it's not that year, is it? But we're going to make little short trips. We're going to be traveling with some friends. We're going to go up and see Tim Barden. He lives up in North Hustle a little ways. We're going to do some cutting with him. As soon as my knees straighten up, oh my goodness sakes, I'll tell you what, there's weather changes we've been having here in the Northeast. The heavy swings... I can't hardly walk some days. So it's like, you know, I just wrecked old knees, you know. Life of a logger, wrecked my back, got rods in it. You guys have been here a while know all about that, that back surgery thing. Yeah. I'm glad I did it. I feel pretty good. Just Now, what we got to do, keep making this fun. If you got questions, leave them in the comments. If it gets more detailed than that, We'll do an email thing. We'll talk. And I'll, I'll see what I can do to help you. I'm trying to get everything back to normal and get caught up on what I should have had done freaking three months ago. But that's the way it is. Now we're doing it. Stay safe, people. Goodbye.